All right, let's start the webinar. So warm welcome to everybody who's joining us today. Um, today I will be presenting and I will be the host of this webinar. My name is Jesse van Hoogstraat. I'm the sales manager here at Civic Construction. Um, we met Wafi Swalim four or five years ago um, on his conquest uh, over his quest regarding 3D concrete printing. And um, yeah, over the years uh, we have, yeah, um, have a solid relationship and we did a lot of projects and did a lot of work with, to, uh, with each other. So uh, this meeting of this webinar will um, yeah, zoom in in this um, in the startup phase, how we started from scratch towards the company that is evolved right now. So um, yeah, let's have a look at how we uh, how we did it. So these are the subjects that will become um, in the coming months regarding the webinar. Uh, on the 30th of August, we have uh, 3D housing projects. Um, and on the September, we have uh, another webinar with uh, the company BIP of Curacao. Um, they've done re recently two projects, so we'll zoom in. Um, and those are two bungalows and a, a villa that are being uh, um, uh, constructed. So um, it's an on-demand webinar. It will be shared on the library afterwards. Uh, so if you want to watch it back, it's uh, free to watch. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat. And if there are any subjects of the webinars uh, that you want to address, or if you have any questions, my uh, colleague, uh, Jesse van Dongen, will be here to uh, address all your questions. So uh, we start with a poll. Have you watched our previous webinars? So we're real curious if you uh, did that. All right, see some newcomers, welcome. Okay, so a lot of newcomers, um, welcome for joining us. Also the ones who already have seen the webinar uh, the first time, thank you. So um, we will zoom in today on um, the company Corox in New Zealand. So we got to know a little bit closer more about Wafi Swalim and his company, um, how they started uh, with embracing the 3D CP technology and what projects uh, Corox is building at the moment and what challenges Corox is facing and has faced uh, in the past. So we'll start a little, uh, little introduction video um, about Wafi and um, what is happening in New Zealand and what we see all over the world and the challenges they are facing. So um, enjoy the video. Construction can be a productive industry. It can be low carbon, low waste sector. And for us to really achieve that, we're gonna to have to embrace new ways of constructing. So construction compared to other industry sectors has uh, quite a low uh, productivity and also low research and development intensity. So this gives New Zealand businesses an opportunity to create solution through R&D and innovation Look, there are barriers to innovation, such as cost, scaling funding, risk aversion, and we're also a sector that's notoriously resistant to change. The case study today is about Corox. This is an organisation that's going through their innovation journey, and we want businesses and construction leaders to learn from their successes and the challenges that they face to really adopt innovation and put it into practice in the New Zealand construction landscape. Repeating the same answer to the problem, expecting different results, is the definition of madness. And I felt that this is what literally the construction industry is doing. It's just we keep on repeating the same answer to 
low productivity, high wastage, bad impact on the environment, and we're continuously short on people. So the technology was developed in the Netherlands by a company called Sebi, and they also developed the material over there. The more I researched, the more I believe that this is the future of the construction industry. I always had in mind that we need to make the material as locally sourced as much as possible. So we worked with Callahan Innovations, and Callahan gave us a grant to develop a New Zealand mix. So the material that we use is mixed in New Zealand. He had a clear and a bold vision to provide uh, technology solutions in housing that is scalable, uh, that is affordable, environmentally sustainable, but can also be provided at speed. We can even do it off-site in a shelter, or we can do it in place. So it gives us a lot more advantages, and the biggest thing is that with a crew of two people, you can print around 30 to 40 houses a year. You still need a guy to put the slab down, you still need a guy to put the roof on, you still have to, somebody to put the kitchen in. But this is one aspect of it. So we were facing two main challenges with our project at the time. One was around time frame and one was around budget. Then he printed off 10 for us within a, a week, I think. It was amazing. And we got them delivered to site like the week after. So it was a pretty great process for us. Concrete not being the most sustainable product, he, was, um, he came up with this great idea to Rather than make the concrete stools like solid concrete, we actually made them hollow and filled them with shredded car tyres. And the community reacted really well to it, actually. They were really excited that Auckland Council was trying um, something new. And hopefully in the future we'll be able to develop more sustainable material that will be using, integrating either waste material in it or maybe geopolymers or hempcrete. We don't know what the future will have for us. All of the trial and tested methods are failing. Our supply chain is broken, we cannot get construction material, and if you have a good business model and you have a good technology, uh, this will be the time to go for it. Um, be aware it's a pre-recorded webinar due to the fact that Wafi is in the air at the moment, he's traveling home uh, from Egypt. Um, but all the items uh, will be addressed, and if you have any questions, yes, sir, and uh, my colleague Jesse will also address them uh, during the webinar itself. So uh, enjoy, and uh, hopefully, um, yeah, you have some a lot of fun with it. Wafi, thank you, man, for joining uh, this webinar. Really uh, nice to have you here. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, it's been uh, a long journey and I'm um, more than happy to share our learnings and experience from it. Yeah, great. Um, so shall we start with a little bit of the introduction of uh, yourself and where do you live? Uh, I'm originally from Egypt. I have a degree in architectural engineering. I work in construction management in Egypt, Dubai, China and uh, moved to New Zealand in 2015. Um, I saw the same problems everywhere and, um, and this drove me in 2018 to start exploring new technologies and I came across 3D printing and that's what intrigued me. Uh, I, currently live, uh, I currently live in Hamilton, which is um, an hour and a half south of Auckland. It's a small town that has a population of 160,000 people but uh, it is the fourth largest city in New Zealand because New Zealand is only 5 million people. So it's a good place to live um, and I'm enjoying it. Right. So that brings me to the next uh, couple of questions. Why did you start with 3SP in the first place? And what's your mission and vision? So what happened is uh, during my career, um, I worked on all sorts of projects and we're almost facing pretty much the same challenges is that we are short on labor, even in Dubai and China, mm -hmm. surprisingly. Uh, you're short of skilled labor or you're short on material or the project timelines are getting squeezed 
beyond human capacity. Yeah. And um, and the same was in New Zealand. Uh, and uh, we cannot keep on building the same way we're building. So because it's literally the definition of madness to keep on re repeating the same uh, answers and expecting a different result. So uh, I kept on looking around and uh, I came across uh, 3D printing construction and uh, and I was really intrigued with it because it finally can increase the efficiency uh, of the construction and also have a massive potential of reducing the cost and uh, reducing the amount of labor required in construction. Because frankly speaking, uh, construction is not the most attractive industry overall because it has these severe uh, booms and bust cycles that can you can be broke within six months uh, and then you have to look for another job. So, uh, and this makes it not attractive industry. So uh, we all continuously struggle with resources full stop, no matter where you are in the world. So the only way to deal with that is that have automation help to fill up this gap. All right, sounds fair enough. Um, brings me to the next couple of questions. How did you decide which printer you needed for your 3D screen? So uh, first, when I came across the 3D printing in 2018, what I ended up doing is um, I actually traveled to Sibi and spent mm -hmm. four days with them to understand how the technology work and all this stuff. And I advise anyone that's about to, to buy a printer, regardless of which company you're going with or whatever, wherever what type of system you're buying is to actually go there and visit them and see what they're doing and how they're doing it and make sure that they're aligned with what you need and what is your market requirements. Because it's a big decision maker on how you're gonna adapt to the building standard, what type of projects you'll be working on. This will dictate what type of robot you need, whether it's a gantry or a robotic arm, um, there's different variations of every type and uh, yeah. what is the most suitable thing for, uh, for the for your market. Um, I also advise people to do a, a very good business case before they start embarking on this because you need to find out uh, how the market is. Uh, but also one of the biggest things is that you need to have um, a construction background because if you don't have a construction background, or at least employ someone that has a construction background that can do all of this due diligence for you is um, there's a lot of fish hooks in building standards and regulations mm -hmm. and, um, and, and the construction industry overall. And you need to have a feel. So you need to be engaging with the right engineers. You need to be engaging with the right people in the government and the government level to make sure that you're getting the answers for your, the questions that, you're, that you have. Um, and, uh, and generally speaking, uh, it's different in every country. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not, it's not completely different, but it is slightly different because every country has different building standards. Some countries, uh, you can build whatever you want as long as an engineer signs it off. Some countries have full uh, uh, system approvals like what we have in New Zealand and Australia. Uh, and even it differs from state to state in, in the United States. So it's just, you need to be very aware of that to make sure that you're buying the right robot from the beginning. Next question that we have is uh, for the local material development because you are uh, locally producing the CB motor um, in New Zealand, right? Yeah, we were producing uh, locally sourcing 80% of, of what comes out of the robot's nozzle. Um, we would like to um, produce more and we believe that we'll be able to produce more. It's just the fact is um, it's a little bit of a, a scale and cre reaching this critical mass to, of, uh, of demand to actually justify the investment to build a big factory. Um, this was a, a long journey. Uh, we were the first one, I believe, to mix the material outside of Europe. Um, it is um, every, every local source material is different. So it is uh, by far the hardest thing to master. Yeah, uh, controlling the robots and the printing and um, CB have made it very easy. The softwares are quite easy. Just with two weeks of training, you'll be able to do it. Uh, not with your eyes closed, but you'll be able to do it. And within a month of practice, you'll be, you'll be, um, you won't master it. 
Yeah. Uh, the material, um, because the local aggregate uh, quality control is a, is always a challenge because uh, um, the demand for the material quality is quite high. Uh, the material that we produce, um, when I show it to people uh, in New Zealand, um, they are they are surprised by and impressed by how how it behaves and how it performs. Mm -hmm. It's a very low shrinkage material. It we don't it rarely cracks. Uh, actually, we we don't have any cracks from shrinkage or anything like that. Uh, we uh, the material sets in five minutes. Uh, in our in our case, it's a little bit complicated because the the part that we import has to travel all the way from Germany to us, so we have a little bit of lost time. Uh, if I was making it in Australia, or if we're doing 3D printing in Australia, or we're doing 3D printing anywhere else in the world, it, this trip would be shorter. Yeah. We are literally the farthest part of the on the planet from Europe, uh, except 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 from our Antarctica, maybe. Uh, yeah. But uh, we don't have uh, solar printed out there yet. So yeah, trust me, I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, uh, yeah, because New Zealand has uh, has a base in the South Pole, um, and they were doing upgrades. So I was talking to the mm -hmm. architect, trying to get us to, to send the robot down there to print a couple of walls, minus thirty degrees. Uh, but they ended up going over a completely different structure. They went with very lightweight uh, yeah. structure. But anyway, uh, the material overall um, it is a process. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, mm -hmm. This. Um, samples that need to be reviewed and, and, and checked. Uh, the biggest challenge is the, uh, is the consistency of the raw material. And then after that, the quality control and the factory that you'll be using to mix the, to mix the material. Uh, and if you get, get these through, uh, you have good consistency in supply and good consistency in, uh, in the quality control of the, of the mixing plant, you'll be pretty much almost there. Uh, you would continuously have to tweak the recipe because aggregate behave differently to which part of the world you're in, mm -hmm. um, and um, and allow for at least six months of R and D in that. Um, don't expect it to happen very quickly because you will do batches. There's a process to it. Uh, that once you you, ha you need the strength, you need the pumpability, you need the consistency, you need the setting time. There is a lot yeah. more variables in there uh, comparing to a doing a model and slicing it and, and sending it to a robot. Uh, well, uh, that, 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 that was something we started right away when, when, once you purchased a, a printer? Yes, you, I started immediately. Uh, yeah. I, I, when the first shipment, we got some already ready mixed stuff, uh, ready mixed sebi mortar, and we got yeah. also active ingredients and we started it. Actually, we started it before that because we had to exchange some samples and we sent some samples yeah. to Europe for the aggregate to review um, because then they tweaked the, the active ingredients or the to match the the, the local aggregate and this is something that Sibi does uh, with uh, with corridor um, uh, and um, and also uh, I advise I advise very strongly if you're going to do that we, um, unfortunately we would, did not have the, the luxury of getting Sibi and corridor to inspect the factory because of COVID because New Zealand borders were closed and yeah. only opened in April. We did it last uh, June, did we? Uh, yeah, we just did it two months ago, uh, a month yeah. ago. We're in July still. Uh, so, so ideally, you want to do this as early as possible. Yeah. Uh, even while the robot is still in manufacturing, uh, to get people there to inspect the potential uh, mixing plants, and then do this. Unless, of course, you're going to be mixing your own material, but then it doesn't hurt for the guys to come and tell you what you need to do and uh, to make sure that you have the right consistency. Definitely. Totally agree on that. Um, right. Um, so we're really curious um, if you look to the uh, possibility. All right. A little bit of 50 50. Okay, feel free to um, 
put something in the chat why you're looking for a 3D concrete printer in general, um, especially the challenges that you face, which you want to solve with 3D concrete printing. Of course, it will be addressed during the webinar, but it's really interesting to chat about it. All right, we now uh, we'll zoom in on the projects that Wafi did um, during the startup and what he's facing uh, and what he's doing right now. So um, let's go on with the second part of the webinar. So what we want to talk about you about some projects you did. Um, can you give us some insights of this project because it was award winning? Uh, so congratulations on that one. Um, but can you give us um, insights in the process, how you developed it, and uh, how you realized it to be an award winning project? So um, this is an interior. Uh, we did uh, the seats that are L shaped, uh, overhanging with uh, with one one base, and we did the bases for these big. Tables. This was uh, um, a project for a client called Forte. Forte are they do engineered timber flooring. Mm -hmm. they're, they're very high end customer, and they um, they have they're very well established in the market. Yeah, and the project really overall won won the first, the best retail uh, interior design in New Zealand, uh, and. Uh, and it was really an honor to be part of this. So we printed the seats and we printed the bases. Um, we printed the seats using uh, oxide, uh, black oxide in them, and we sealed them and the bases were printed and then painted. Um, and we painted this, uh, we painted the bases uh, with just two coats of paint. We didn't need to do much to it because the material by nature is light in color and absorbs paint quite well. And, um, and the seats, um, Printing happened very quickly. Actually, the post printing process took a lot longer than the printing itself because uh, we had to fill them, we had to, to polish them because they wanted to have polished tops uh, for the seating. Uh, the bases were very, very easy and very quick because we just printed the base and we just put some concrete in there to in the, ba in the base of it and uh, and the and the top was fixed to it. So it was very good, successful project, and the client was very happy with it and. Um, the cherry on top of the cake was that uh, last week it won the, uh, the best retail interior uh, in the New Zealand interior awards. So it was very good. Yeah, and it looks really great. So I think the uh, award is more than deserved. So you painted, of course, the the, uh, the tables, right? Yeah, we, we, we painted the bases. So we printed them and then uh, the client wanted to have this iron sand color. Mm -hmm. And then they, we painted them, and then before delivering them, and they, they were they were painted with normal normal paint. It then yeah. we don't need to use any special paint. And this is this is one of the things that uh, really excites me about the technology is because painting it is very very easy, and you can use oxide in it, and you don't need to paint it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and you can polish it, you can leave it as it is, you can plaster it. So it gives you infinite amount of options. Most of the con most of the uh, construction materials, like for example, brick or or a weatherboard, uh, it is it is what it is. You know, it cannot cannot it, can, it doesn't cannot change so much. No. Um, but with uh, with three D printing, you can make it actually very different. That without obviously taking into account the patterns that could be. In, could be done yes. because these spaces could have had a pattern in them, but um, uh, there was no need for that. All right. So one other project that we uh, want to highlight is the exterior project that you did. Um, can you tell a little bit more about the, the, the outdoor furniture that you have uh, realized? Yeah, so this is a client that wanted to have a 1.5 meter seat and we printed it with, um, with, um, with like um, um, a fabric pattern on it. And uh, and it's sitting in their in the in the garden in, in Cambridge and south of Auckland, uh, south of Hamilton. Uh, it is um, I think it was printed in 
24 minutes or something like that. And, uh, and it was really very quick. Like we, we have this design, we have tried it, we have worked it before. So it was quite simple for us. And um, yeah, it was um, easily supplied and installed. So there wasn't really anything um, challenging about this job. Uh, which is good. <laughs> Sometimes it could be too challenging. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's a perfect example of the technology doing what should be what it should be doing. Yeah, definitely. And um, I like the way how you produce it by just uh, fit it vertical and then you can hoist it towards the horizontal side. Yeah. So you did also some planners, of course. Yeah, this was a slightly a tall planter. It was 1.5 meters high. And um, we started with dark oxide and then we went with the white material in the middle. So that's why you have a lighter base in the middle. And then we went back again with the oxide. So you had this nice fade in and out and, uh, and it, was, um, it was printed uh, again, I think in 20 or so minutes, I don't know recall exactly because this was last year mm -hmm. and um, and that's it and we give it a, a coat of sealer concrete sealer uh, just to preserve the oxide color uh, because um, our material is uh, even though it's very special it's not so it doesn't behave so much different sometimes to traditional concrete uh, uh, traditional concrete and all cementitious materials at the end they get lighter in color so if you want to keep this dark look, it needs to be uh, sealed uh, to protect it and also to protect it from any buildup of, um, of dirt or anything like that. Yeah, definitely. All right. Um, so Wafi, congrats on the uh, Hua house. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So really nice project man, going on. Can you tell a little bit more about the development and the realization of this house? So uh, last year we um, we were uh, on the, um, there was a segment about us on the TV and the client saw it and uh, they walked in and said I want to make my house using this and uh, and we went with the, with the architect uh, and he was happy with uh, with our system and then we uh, we we did an amendment to the building uh, permit. And the uh, Auckland Council was very happy with all of the testing and all of the procedures that we have done. And because of that, what ended up happening is that um, the approval went, came very quickly uh, to, change the build, uh, to change the build. And then um, we created uh, some shop drawings for the architect because we have patterns onto the walls and we made sure that the patterns were in the right locations and um, on the right sizing and gave the right effect. Uh, this is a big advantage comparing to what you traditionally had was uh, cement blocks. Yeah. And uh, without cement blocks, you could not do these patterns. So the client ended up getting a far superior um, feature in their house comparing to just the uh, gray masonry blocks. And they will leave the pattern in there. They will leave the 3D printed patterns. They will not uh, cover them uh, because the they love it and um, and actually a very soft and nice texture to that house. Yeah, definitely saw some pictures of that. You can show some more pictures uh, in the next slide. Uh, because we've got a picture here about the finishing results uh, right on the right side of it. Um, so how did you comply with the permit and building code? You, you, you mentioned uh, earlier that you have um, yeah, put it on with a uh, local municipality and they approved it pretty fast. Yeah. Was it due to the fact you already had the building code to do that? Yeah, and, and that's because we already have done all of the testing and we're already compliant. And uh, and and they just wanted to, to see what we have done. And that's what made it very quick. Um, and that's one of the things that uh, I always advise people is just try to find how you're going to deal with the local governance and the local building standards. And they are different in every country. Uh, based on the requirements. Uh, as I mentioned, New Zealand is very big on seismic requirements. Uh, and that's why we had to fill up the walls with concrete and put horizontal and vertical reinforcement in them. Um, so there are really the, structural the, walls then for the- Yeah, the, they are, they are load, the load bearing walls. They, are, yeah. they will carry the roof and uh, they are part of the structure of the building, part of the base elements of the house. 
Um, we have also another house that we just started printing. Uh, this will be the first, the first fully 3D printed house uh, in New Zealand and most likely Australasia. And this, uh, and this house is going. We started printing it um, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so, how, how did you secure um, uh, those elements to the slab floor? Uh, so, we you have to connect the wall to the slab with a with a bed of mortar. Mm -hmm. um, and then this bed of mortar effectively acts as a glue between uh, both of them. The right. same thing that you would you do with the cement blocks. Yeah. And how, how did you do the wall connections then with uh, the separate parts that are being transported towards the job site? Uh, similar, similar details like uh, precast panels uh, and similar details again to masonry uh, units. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a typical detail that everyone uses. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and the idea is that to use already uh, details that are being uh, are familiar with the current uh, with the local uh, construction. Yeah. Uh, one of the advices is that not to change everything mm -hmm. because uh, people freak out uh, <laughs> about how much changes you have done, and uh, and they are a lot more uh, conservative. But if you if you explain to them that using similar details are a lot a lot to how can I say open. Uh, to new technologies because they're familiar with a lot of parts of it. Yeah. And how did you do the how did you do the roof? So can you tell us about the, the roof? roof uh, the, the top of it? So the roof is normal timber uh, timber framed roof. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not part of our scope. Our scope is only to supply the walls. And this is one of the things that also is very uh, uh, it's, it's important to know that when you are printing, you do not print everything. Uh, it's not that we print the, the cables, the kitchen, uh, and uh, and the slab. Um, yeah. Uh, we we have do the walls, and we work with the builders, and the builders do the other elements um, that complete the house. Yeah. And how, how do you um, mount those uh, timber or lumber uh, rooftops on top of your um, elements? So you usually have you usually have a timber plate that sits over the panels. Mm -hmm. And then the trusses sits on top of the plates. All right. Okay. So, what are the main advantages you see uh, going through the CP? So, it's um, um, like this house, and uh, the house that we're doing only had two guys. I don't have mm -hmm. a big team. Uh, we are a small team, and uh, and this is proves the. Um, the efficiencies of the technology, especially when it comes to uh, uh, many, um, to human resources. Also, the speed, um, like it took us, as I mentioned, five days, including filling on site. This was yep. taking normal masonry three to four weeks. Um, the finish that you get is uh, far more superior than a standard masonry. Uh, mm -hmm. the, also, you can have it done um, with different finishes, different pattern, different uh, textures, with not much additional costs. So you can do preform designs again, maybe with one or two percent more material uh, that you won't, won't be able to do. Uh, it gives uh, uh, overall. It's the uh, it is the time and speed and provide uh, and providing. Uh, uh, a product that uh, is superior right now when it comes to price point. Uh, because the technology is still young, it's still in the beginning. Uh, we, we are not uh, yet beating other methods of construction mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. overall, but uh, we believe with scale, we'll be able to, to be uh, a lot faster and, and also will, the price of material will eventually come down and this will help us uh, become uh, and more and more competitive in the marketplace. Right now, it's similar pricing with all of the added, added benefits of speed. But yeah. uh, hopefully, in the future, within the next couple of years, you'll be able to have um, the, have it cheaper with again the benefits of speed. Just to give you a rough idea, an average house in New Zealand, based on the statistics from the last fifteen years, takes around uh, nine to twelve months to complete with three D printing. Uh, we'll be able to to make it a lot faster. We believe we can we can do it in around eight to ten weeks. This is the complete house, not just our walls. Um, and that's almost and five is, times faster, is it? Yeah. All right, man. 
the future project. You can give us some perspective on what you have. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, we have this house it's, um, that we're doing in, in Auckland. It is uh, 240 square meters. It's 43D printed. And we started it. We also have uh, a daycare that we'll be printing structural and firewalls for. Um, uh, uh, they're load bearing, they're carrying the roof of the building and they're carrying the building. And also we have a big uh, stormwater collection system that uh, is gonna be printed in the next uh, two months. Um, this is 50 meters long and, um, and it has uh, a lot of elements in it and the council have accepted it and, uh, and the developer have um, already signed the contract. Uh, well, congratulations on that one. Uh, they, uh, they also the, when you're doing infrastructure projects, you need uh, you need to prove whatever you're supplying will last for 100 years, and uh, and this on its own is um, is a big challenge, and yeah. we managed to do that, and uh, and the council is uh, happy with it because the council will in eventually end up owning this stormwater system not the developer. So they wanted to make sure that it's, um, it will stand the test of time. Yeah, and how did you convince them to do that? Because the model that we have developed is only just enough for almost five, six years. So how would they convince them? Uh, it's well, it's, for it's, years? So it's really dependent on the chemicals that are in the mortar. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that really uh, says that more than, more than the, what's happening. So you have... Uh, you have uh, you have examples of, uh, of, for example, you can. It's very common thing to say, okay, Roman built stuff with basic concrete, and it lasted over two thousand years. Yeah, uh, and, and imagine, and it when you talk about concrete mortar uh, or or cementitious mortar, people are really uh, they understand it. Uh, if you just mention to them. Uh, uh, what what kind of ingredients it has and what it's based on and what kind of testing they can easily relate to it. Yeah, um, uh, we call uh, we call our material um, uh, Corox Ink uh, because uh, we believe it's so far superior to a normal uh, cement in, to any anything on the market that itself uh, needs to have its own category. Before, um, so we're really curious. We uh, mentioned some topics that we see all over the world happening. Super construction is uh, trending. Design possibilities, all right. That's a, that's a new one for me. Fast realization of projects, yeah. All right. Gives us more insights in the topics, or in the, the things that are happening in the construction mode. So thank you for your uh, filling in the poll. So we're now going over to the uh, third part of the webinar. Um, it's zooming into the tips for entrepreneurs. All right. So, what we want to um, want to talk about the tips for entrepreneurs. But first of all, I want to go to some myth busting uh, around 3D CP because a lot of people have some um, doubts and questions about 3D CP, especially about myths. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the myths you have faced in in the, in the 3D CP market? Yeah. Uh, so, one of the biggest myth is that uh, 3D printing is cheaper. Um, 3D printing will be cheaper. 
it's not cheaper yet. No. Um, is it the same uh, level? Is it? It it is similar. It's similar price point. Yeah. Uh, but with the added advantage of speed, you know, we calculated that people would be saving around fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars by getting their house earlier. Yeah. So that this this overall will be money that's being saved. It's not going to be reflected when you sign the contract, but it's money that you are saving that can go towards new furniture, relocation, and whatever it is. So uh, a lot of people lot are of time, forgetting about that aspect. It's always yeah. comparing about the material itself. Exactly, and they're comparing also how much it costs me per square meter of house to build or per square foot of yeah, house yeah, to build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, it will be similar, but overall, when you look at it, it'll be cheaper. Also, we found that comparing timber framed houses to 3D printed houses, they require less energy to heat them compared to timber frame because mm -hmm. of the thermal mass of concrete. So you are saving, uh, the, there's been studies done in New Zealand um, by a concrete NZ that shows that there is around 20% saving in energy consumption of concrete houses compared to timber frame house. Wow. So this yeah. is another saving that you don't see when you're signing the contract. Uh, yeah. Also maintenance cost, um, concrete houses require a lot less maintenance compared to timber frame houses. Mm -hmm. uh, so the ownership overall cost is is a lot less. Um, concrete behaves a lot better than timber and fires. So also if you, if you have if you if you're close to a, to an area that's prone to a, to wildfires, you'll be a lot more protected in a concrete house. Yeah. Also, when we have flooding and uh, this becoming a recurring thing in, in the yeah, definitely. world. Um, uh, again, concrete houses uh, will just need to be cleaned, water blasted, and then you'll be able to live in them. Timber framed houses, you will have to pull them down because usually there's mold inside the walls. So all of these are added advantages that again are not reflected directly in the in the, in the in the value that you're signing the contract at, but in the long term, it helps. But that being said, we believe in the next five years will be even cheaper than the conventional construction. So if we are uh, cheaper with all of these added benefits, it's no brainer. Yeah, and with current prices of materials going up uh, and the lead times of those prices, the, the delay on projects itself in general, of course, um, it will be cheaper, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so the next question. Yeah, the also one was a robotic printer are better than Gantry printers. You mentioned that topic uh, in the preparation of our webinar by yourself. So tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so it... It's one of these things is that I believe in New Zealand, for us here, mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a robotic arm is better than a gantry. Uh, Why? That differs, uh, that differs from every country to country. The main reason is that we have, we, it's not part of the, our uh, start setup to have a canopy or a roof over the build when we're building it. Uh, it's commonplace in a lot of places in Europe and Canada when it gets really cold in winter. And New Zealand mm -hmm. does not get that cold, but it rains all of the time, which means that you will need, uh, you cannot have a gantry system that's continuously exposed to rain because you will have massive delays because of the rain and yeah. it will affect the material consistency. So mm -hmm. the only way to avoid that to have a canopy, which is an additional cost that people in New Zealand are not familiar with. So this is, this is one of the main reasons. But also with the gantry, most of the time, it is, uh, it is a lot more challenging to be able to have the flexibility of printing on-site or off-site, depending on the project. With a, rob a mobile robotic arm, you can print on-site. If, if it suits the project, you can print off-site if, it if, it, if this is a strategy that they're using. And we have taken the robot and we did public demonstrations in Hamilton and Auckland. We arrived to a couple of hours before, before the, the demonstration. We print, and then a couple of hours later, we're done. So it, this just shows you the flexibility that you have with a mobile system. Yeah. On the flip side of that, gantries might be suitable for other countries. Um, it's one of these uh, things is that there isn't a right uh, uh, system that will cover the whole world. And, uh, and I'm glad that SIBI right now have developed a gantry system that will be able to, to, uh, to address the needs of people that want to have a gantry. And um, so, it's having a mobile crane or a gantry crane. Uh, there, each one of them has, has its uses and each one of them has the, the projects that we'll be working on that will be perfect for. Yeah, so we also overall, said in the, the previous webinar, it's just, yeah. 
it depends on the, which the job you want to do with the printer itself, right? Yeah, exactly. And the last thing is uh, on-site is more efficient than printing off-site. Uh, again, uh, uh, it, it's a little bit answered in the, in the previous question about the difference is, uh, actually there isn't uh, one, is, one is better than the other. Obviously one you're in shelter, but you have to transport it. The other one you're on site, you need to transport material and have a site set up. It again comes down to the project uh, and what makes more sense for that particular project. If you are doing uh, projects in places that don't have water or electricity, which means that you have to hire generators and all of this stuff, then it will make it more challenging to print on site uh, compared to printing in a facility and then transporting. At the end of the day, something has to go to site. Yeah. Whether it's a robot uh, or a gantry or uh, with the material and all of the facilities with it or a finished product in the shape of walls. And this is a decision that needs to be made based on the project, uh, project and project basis. I know CB printed a lot of stuff on site and also printed a lot of stuff off site. And the same thing for us. Um, it's just having the system that gives you the flexibility that you need, depending on the climate that you're in, depending on the building requirements, depending on the types of building that you'll be doing, plays a big role on it. If you're going to be printing big houses, like 240 square meter houses or 300 square meter houses, you will not have a gantry system big enough to do that. And, uh, and at that time, you end up printing elements or having to relocate the gantry and, and and it comes with the headaches of uh, disassembling and reassembling, comparing to having a small, yeah. nimble, nimble robotic, uh, robotic arm that can move around, print where you need to go, and then move and print the next one, which doesn't have a lot of limitation to it. And the no. setup time of, of, of setting the robot up is less than 20 minutes. So it is very easily done to print one element and then move to the next and print the next one. So Yeah, so you can yeah. go on with the process, but yeah. yeah. Uh, so... It again, uh, there isn't a right way, uh, there isn't one way to do it, it's just what works best for the project. All right, totally agree on that one. Um, so some advice for the 3DCP entrepreneurs um, starting. It's a full-time job, right? Yeah, uh, I, ha I had to quit my job as a project manager to do this. Um, if you're not 100% fully dedicated to it, it will never take off. Yeah. Uh, There'll be a massive steep curve in learning. So be ready to learn uh, and to study. Um, and the, the less you know about construction, the more studying you will have to do. And I, and I truly believe if you're an entrepreneur uh, starting a startup business, you need to know everything inside out. Mm -hmm. um, and so later down the line, you can delegate to people and explain to them how you want it and the learnings from it. And if you don't know it and they're finding it by themselves, you obviously are not efficient. So what are the most important steps then before you start uh, with we speak? So for, first of all, the advantage of 3D printing is quite obvious and has been covered in, in the in media all. So it doesn't take uh, a lot of effort to, to Google 3D printing and you will yeah. get a lot of information about it. So, uh, so that's the first thing. The, um, you, you need to do your research to understand that this is something that you want to be involved in from the beginning, full stop, because mm -hmm. it's not it's not something that's going to happen in three months or six months. Uh, after that, you actually need to understand your local market mm -hmm. and what type of building and what is your niche, where you'll be, uh, uh, where your sales is going to come from. And yeah. based on that, you do you uh, this will will do two things: it will guide you to what type of robot you need or what type of printer you need, and then will also generate your sale, uh, your business case. And then you approach the companies that produces the, role, the type of robot that you have. And one of the things that I really like with SEBI is that in the beginning, they evaluate you based on your business case. It's not that, uh, okay, I'm going to have money, I'm going to buy a robot from you, and that's it. No, um, it is important to understand what is the market. And where are you going to be tackling it and how? And then after that, you start to say, okay, uh, you, you raise finance, you, you order your robot, you raise uh, if you If you have cash, you, you're, you can buy it. If you don't, you need to go through the journey of, uh, of raising capital for it. 
And while you're doing that, you need to be talking to engineers and architects and finding how you're going to comply with the local standards. Yeah. And if there's any testing requirement required for that. And then but it's and also then, setting a roadmap then, Rafi, to, to from the moment you start exploring to the moment you want to launch your company and all the steps between it, right? Yeah, it, it is it is very important. And this is one of the things that you will need to tackle while you're doing the business case, the road to market. Mm. And the, this thing, this document will be a work in progress for a long, long time because the more you know, the more it will change. The more you talk to people, the more the feedback you get from the market, this will affect it. Yeah, because uh, how, how long did you do that over your business case? How much time did, was uh, that? Possible? So initially, I did the business case in 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this, uh, I completed it after visiting Civi. And then uh, together, and then um, uh, we started the journey of, uh, of the testing and designing. And this took almost all of 2019. Yeah. And then I ordered the robot at the end of 2019. And if, if COVID wasn't around, it would have arrived in May. So in reality, it took around uh, 15 to 16 months yeah. from, from, uh, from the initial contact to actually having the robot in place. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, because we had COVID, so we had to have had a, a four or five months on top of that. But this also included a period of um, uh, testing and validation in museums. Mm -hmm. So um, you can shorten this period by waiting until you have the robot and do your validation. Um, or, or you might not need to have a separate validation. And for example, the testing has been already done in the Netherlands or in Europe is, is sufficient and then get squeezed uh, a, lot, yeah. uh, a lot more. Because the, the proof is already there, so you can then, yeah. Exactly. So it is, it, it is different and, um, in every country. Like I, I know in some parts of the world, there is no building standard. So if you just bring the robot and print, you're printing. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sure the guys in Japan who were, um, so we had to do similar testing and similar process. Uh, uh, when you did the uh, buildings in Dubai, you had to do testing in Dubai. So it is really, really dependent on how fast you can get the testing and how and what you need to do. Right. So the last one was keep your options uh, keep your options open, but uh, don't commit to one company. That's one you mentioned uh, in preparation during your. Uh, yeah, don't, don't sign exclusivity agreements in the beginning because I ha I fell on this track. Mm. Um, a lot of companies will see the potential in the technology and we want yeah. to hoard it just for them. Uh, but but a lot of the times this will take you out of the market for a period of time if this doesn't happen. Um, a lot of the time it's very appealing and looks okay if I sign a contract with a, a good company I'm set I don't have to worry about sales as much because the sales will be coming through this company what yeah. ends up happening is that you end up trapping yourself yeah all right so um, uh, yeah Rafi the advice for 3D Supreme entrepreneurs um, learn as much uh, about the 3D Supreme technology building code etc um, that's something we already discussed in the, in the previous slides of course um, but visit 3 dcp companies. Why is that so much important? Uh, because, as I mentioned before, it is very important to build a relationship with the, with the, with the suppliers and for you to understand the technology better. Um, at that time, there was only three companies around the world that were supplying mm -hmm. them, uh, robots. Uh, and I felt more comfortable with Sibi. And when I visited them, I found the support that I was looking for and I found the understanding and we effectively clicked and if you have a partner that you are comfortable to work with and you trust each other, this is the basis of any relationship that you have. And, uh, and both of you are working together to achieve that. So, and this is what was the most important thing for me is to find a partner that it's easy to work with and continuously giving the support and working with them. Um, and uh, I don't think a lot of people would, spend, would send their staff and spend two weeks in quarantine uh, to... <laughs> come game addicts <laughs> yeah yeah so okay. this is this this shows a commitment from both sides to to get to get to get things uh, to get uh, yeah but that's a partnership story. of course but so um make a business plan of course that's one of the most important uh, steps and get financing um but finding the right partners, of course, is then um, one of the most important steps of, of getting success. But the, the 
part that we didn't uh, um, talk about a few minutes ago was the network with people with the same vision. How, how important is that for um, to succeed? It is, it is very important because this world you'll find your early adapters, you'll find your support, you'll find uh, they will generate sales for you through their network, they will help. Um, these are the people that uh, believe in what you're doing and also can guide you to get government grants for developing materials and uh, and maybe in the future if you're going to expand to help support with that they can support with labor so yeah. they can support with staffing so it is it is quite important to have to have a network and it, this only happens if you are involved in the industry and you're knocking on doors you'll be mm -hmm. doing a lot of door knocking you'll be doing a lot of cold calls uh, you'll be doing a lot of uh, what they call the lift pitches. So yeah. be ready with the videos and pictures on your phone all of the time and get yeah. a big screen phone. So if you run it to someone, you can, can easily show them what, what's been happening. Not, it doesn't need to be what you're doing. It could be examples of what stuff that's happened overseas. Because yeah. in the beginning, well, before we got the robot and before we're printing anything in New Zealand, I didn't have anything to show that's in New Zealand. So I had to rely on examples that were done overseas. And the more work you do, the more exam local examples you have, and people want to see that. So uh, uh, networking is a big part of it. Uh, actually, it is a very important part of it because you might find uh, business partners, you might find finance through this networking. And, uh, and, um, and uh, yeah, it is, uh, it is a fundamental part of the process. Thank you, Matt, for this uh, great webinar. Thanks for having me. I hope I uh, gave people some useful insights. Uh, the technology is amazing and, uh, and I believe it's the future of the construction industry. Yeah, um, I want to thank you for your cooperation and uh, years of dedication to the 3D uh, concrete business. Um, please feel free to check this website, Wafis Marim, it's coox.co.nz. Uh, um, yeah, you can follow him. And, uh, do you have Instagram, Facebook? Yeah, we have Instagram and Facebook. So if you if you go on our website, you will find them. If you just Google our name, you will find us. Um, so uh, we are everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a great job, man. Keep up the uh, the pace on the projects, and hopefully we can see more in the in the future. Thanks a lot for that. So if you have any questions regarding uh, the journey that Wafi did, um, or specific questions technical questions, you can address them right now and uh, we try to answer them. I think it was all clear. All right. Um, yeah, you're all uh, welcome. We want to thank you, of course, for joining us. I uh, wanted to highlight one more thing. It's the CB Academy. Uh, we've got the free operated course um, that you can follow if you want to. Um, we've got all the practical and technical know-how uh, mentioning on our website. Uh, so feel free to um, go to the library and the academy and um, just join ours. Uh, join and follow the course. So thank you for attending. Uh, what's next? Of course, there will be a uh, next webinar about the cost calculation. The question was already in the chat once uh, one more time um, about how you can make it profitable. Uh, we will zoom in on that one on the 30th of August at uh, four o'clock uh, Central European time. Um, oh, Venom has one uh, one more question. <laughs> what is placed in the whole sections of the wall? Oh, that's that's a great question. Um, it depends. Um, of course, your building code regulations is still something we um, need to uh, um, yeah have a look in. But you can place isolation material or um, reinforced concrete is also one of the options that you could put in it to uh, make it, for example, um, earthquake resistant. Hope that gives you an answer, uh, a proper answer to your question. Yes, it's always possible to visit the uh, CBHQ. Um, feel free to just send me an email um, and we can discuss the options and times when you want to join or to visit our factory and our HQ. Yes, the webinar of today was being recorded. So um, after that, uh, the webinar is also being shared on our library and can be watched um, after this.
All right. So if there are no further questions anymore, I want to thank you once more, one more time and uh, wish you a pleasant day. And hopefully we'll see you on the next webinar. Bye-bye.